And let's bring in foreign correspondent Maggie Rooley along with White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks and ABC's Alex Prache in Washington for more. Uh, Maggie, Zelensky presented this graphic video of what Ukrainians are going through. He also referenced, remember Pearl Harbor, remember 9-11, really trying to paint a picture to the American people of what Ukrainians are going through. You remember what it was like here right after 9-11. How does it make you feel thinking about that and then seeing what you're seeing there on the ground? Oh, Diane, I mean, what a powerful moment, evoking those emotional moments from American history, comparing them to what's happening right now. As he said, every single day, calling, you know, imagine, according to Zelensky, saying, imagine the terror that Americans felt on September 11th. That's happening over our skies every single day for the past nearly three weeks here in Ukraine. That video that he put out, I mean, wow, uh, just an emotional moment inside Congress, Diane, to be watching that video. I think it was such a smart move by him, playing on the emotional of everyone involved. You know, Diane, it's one thing to, to read the statistics, to even watch videos online, but to actually see and feel those moments play out here on the ground, Diane, it's, it's gut-wrenching. I mean, we go to the train station almost every day. We've all seen those images there now, but to witness them in person, families being torn apart, husbands and wives saying goodbye, fathers saying goodbye to their children, children who have just lost their childhoods. I mean, that is the kind of emotion that he wanted to show to Congress, because at the end, that's what's going to matter. If he can turn hearts and minds in Congress, he can convince them to give Ukraine more money, more weapons, potentially close the sky. You know, who knows? He knows that emotion is going to be a key driving factor in turning this war. And Alex Zelensky, uh, in addition to the many sort of military options he threw out that he needs, he also proposed creating a union of countries. He called it the U-24, United for Peace. What would that look like? And what's the likelihood of that actually happening? What's, what's Zelensky trying to do here? Well, Diane, I mean, we'll see what the appetite for this is, but it's a novel concept. Uh, basically, a union of these countries, United for Peace, as you mentioned, that would be able to respond at times within 24 hours to help stop conflicts immediately, is what he said. And that's through a number of ways, uh, providing assistance, sanctions, even weapons. Um, but what's what's going to be interesting to see is uh, basically how this is received, I, I guess, by the West or the rest of the West. Now, Mary Alice, President Biden is also set to announce more military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. What will that look like and what impact could it have? Yeah, the White House has been insisting that the weapons they've been getting to the Ukrainian military have been making a difference, have been having an impact. Of course, we're going to be looking closely, listening closely to see if President Biden announces any new systems, any types of weapon systems that they have not already sent. The White House, oh, over the last few weeks, though, has been sending some pretty heavy-duty weapons, uh, heavy-duty weapons, anti-aircraft, anti-armor systems. Uh, they say that these sorts of uh, weapons are matter and, and have been turning the tide here. Uh, you know, I think that it's important to remember that a large part of the package that, that Congress signed was also money, like you said, for humanitarian assistance, billions of dollars in food aid uh, and direct economic assistance to Ukraine and eastern NATO countries. Another big question we've all been tracking is whether or not the United States will actually be able to continue to move these weapon systems. We've seen, you know, attacks over the weekend get closer and closer to that Polish border. Big concerns that Russia could be actively targeting supply lines. The United States says that they are not deterred, that they're as determined as ever to continue to get these sorts of weapons into the country. But that could be getting more difficult, Diane. And Maggie, the UK Defense Ministry says that Russian forces are having a difficult time with the terrain in Ukraine. What's the latest on the fighting? You know, this is what's so interesting. You know, I think at the beginning of this war, most people thought Russia would be able to come into Ukraine. They declared they could conquer it within a couple of days. They were one of the most powerful armies. But everyone has been amazed by the way the Ukrainian people have been able to defend their city. You know, we've heard uh, so many experts on the ground talk about what Ukrainians have going for them. They know their city. They also have a reason to fight, a reason to protect their homeland. And also, so many of the attacks are happening in urban areas. Urban areas are notoriously hard to attack, much easier to defend, especially if you know 
the terrain. So as Russian forces keep sort of approaching these areas, they're getting stalled. That's why you see them resorting to things like indiscriminate shelling and bombings, which are so dangerous for civilians. But clearly, they are struggling. And you know that's why Zelensky is also asking for new weapons. If he can put arms into these fighters, you know, so many people here tell us they want to fight, they want to defend their homeland. President Zelensky is asking to let them do it, to give them the weapons to do this. And again, I think what was so powerful is he, again, playing on those emotions, making the point that if you give us the weapons, we're protecting peace, not just here in Ukraine, but in all of Europe and around the world. Anne. All right. And Alex, how are members of Congress responding to Zelensky's address? Did he move the needle at all in terms of trying to get more support for some of the more controversial requests he's making? Well, I certainly think he's moved the needle in terms of getting uh, more support, but it's it's still a no-go on that no-fly zone. I think uh, it's been a hard line of the Biden administration, uh, and the vast majority of members of Congress have been opposed to to closing the skies uh, over the Ukraine just because of of what it would mean in the broader picture of putting the the United States uh, at war with 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 Russia. But this was brought up uh, uh, before. I think in 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 him positioning that, especially so prominently. It, during his address, uh, it, it, it sets a negotiation table for, for other measures. You heard him, well, if this is too much to ask, then we ask this, uh, getting other support, whether it be uh, planes or, or anti-aircraft uh, weaponry. All right, Alex Pache, Maggie Rooley, and Mary Alice Parks, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.